Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. It's a pleasure uh, to welcome you once again for this IWC uh, Clinical Case Symposium. Uh, we will have uh, three cases today from uh, the IWC centers from uh, Istanbul, Santiago de Chile, uh, and Paris. We will have uh, also an invited case uh, from Ramallah by Dr. Maridi. So uh, I would like first to remind the principle of these meetings. There are interactive meetings. Uh, so during uh, the uh, presentation case, we will uh, share some polls. Uh, so uh, please feel free to ask any question and to answer the polls. Uh, Clément Prenot will be my co-moderator today. He's our colleague here in Paris. Hello, Clément. Could you say hi to everyone, please? Yes. Hello, Alam. Hello, everyone. So uh, feel free to ask any question. Hello. He will forward the, the question from the chat. Uh, I would like to also uh, thank all the panelists who uh, accepted to join the debate and the discussion to help us today. I'm very happy uh, to welcome, of course, Christophe Matulin, who is uh, currently in Tokyo. Hi, Professor Matulin. Hello, are you with us? Welcome. How are you doing in Tokyo? Uh, it's perfect. Tokyo is a very incredible city, and uh, uh, it is a cherry blossom uh, period. It's uh, wonderful, wonderful. Thank so, you. Uh, very happy uh, to to be with you, and uh, I would like to congratulate uh, all of you, particularly Halam, but uh, also Clement, Clement for the organization. Therein, I'm very happy to see you. I know that you are to New Orleans, uh, actually. Uh, and uh, yes. I, I see. I follow your life, you know, every day. Uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that is the, the advantage of the 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 all the the system we have now. I would mm -hmm. like to congratulate particularly Lucian for the innovative uh, wrist, wrist uh, world of wrist. It's a uh, wonderful and, uh, all the night, all the day, everywhere in the world. Yes. There are discussion and terrible case, so it's fantastic. So uh, probably I cannot say all the 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 the, the symposium, but I just uh, would like to tell you how happy I am to see that uh, uh, the risks exist, the risk lovers are numerous, and you continue the work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Thank you. Matulin. So I will, I would like also to welcome uh, Professor Boulent Mark Hanifa from IWC Istanbul. They will be with us and they present the case. We have, of course, uh, Dr. Jorquera and Javier Saba Sanchez from Santiago de Chile. Uh, I don't see Abhijit uh, Vangana from uh, Pune for the moment. Uh, I would like to thank everyone. Abdel Rahman Maridi from Ramallah, who will share the first case today. Uh, Sherin, uh, Professor Matula, talk about this. America Latina is well represented, of course. Uh, we have uh, uh, Carlos Morales. Hello, Carlos. Thank you for joining. If not, uh, and uh, normally we should have uh, Gustavo Gomez, he's not uh, here. And uh, of course, Lucian is uh, joined the meeting. And uh, uh, of course, my friend, the French surgeon. So normally uh, we have uh, Shia Talet from Mulhouse and my colleague and partner, Lorenzo Mervini. Lorenzo, are you with us? Lorenzo will connect uh, in a few moments. So I think uh, we, we, we have, uh, thank you everyone uh, for uh, your help. Uh, we can uh, start right now with the first case. It is the invited case from Ramallah by uh, Dr. Maridi, who will present uh, a destruction of the distal radius. He will ask us for some advice and recommendation for the best uh, treatment in this very difficult case. 
So Abdel Rahman, could you switch on your micro, please, and share your, uh, your screen? Hello, everyone. Thank you for letting me share my case. Um, uh, it says only the host can share in the meeting. I'm, I'm unable to share my screen. Oh, no, it would, it should be okay. Yes, no, yes. Share Sorry. screen, no problem. Can you see my slides now? Yes, it's perfect. And we can uh, hear you, Abdel Rahman. Thank you. You can okay. start. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining. And uh, thank you for helping me with my case. So today, I'm presenting a case of a 31 years old male patient. He is right hand dominant, and he works as both a manual worker and a sales on an internet salesman. Uh, the patient suffered from a high velocity gunshot injury to the right distal forearm and wrist. The date of the injury was the 22nd of February, 2023, which is exactly five weeks ago now. These are the initial uh, photos in the emergency room taken for the patient. Uh, initial management was uh, patient was uh, ABCs, fluids, antibiotics, ATS. He was taken to emergency surgery where a debridement and stabilization of the wrist was done. If you notice from the photo, you can see the carbon bones or all are obvious. You can see them here through the wound that is there. The initial assessment in terms of soft tissue, there is complete loss of the second, third, and fourth extensor compartment tendons. There is loss of large part of the distal radius both median and ulnar nerve are intact and functioning. The flexors are intact. And there was, uh, we were able to do soft tissue coverage primarily. His first post-op x-rays after applying the external fixator is as follows. You can notice the big defect in the distal radius. The last dressing was done on the 30th, two days ago, which shows acceptable soft tissue coverage. A CT scan was done for the patient on the 21st of March, which is showing, as you can see here, as following. There is a huge defect of the distal radius. The radial styloid uh, is not there. The scaphoid fossa part of the radius articular surface is not there. There is, on the second image, as you see, only around one third of the articular surface still there. Nothing is articulating with the scaphoid. A little part is articulating with the lunate. The ulna on the other hand is okay with no problem. And there is a big metaphysial defect below the articular surface. So my question is, given that we don't have any prosthesis or allograft available, how can we save the patient's wrist and how can we give him motion? Thank you, uh, Abdel Rahman. Could you uh, just uh, go back uh, to the... Uh, uh, CT? Yes, yes. Yes, maybe yes. Uh, we can ask... Uh, uh, okay, perfect. Uh, is anyone... I think we, uh, we could uh, ask uh, some... I think we, we can uh, stop sharing your screen. Uh, so I can uh, we can ask our panelists. Uh... Yes. Okay. Uh, I can see uh, some of the panelists came back. Uh, I can see uh, first Christophe Matulin uh, would like to make a comment, uh, Professor Matulin. So uh, if you want, I, I start. You know, how old is the patient, uh, Abdel Rahman? 31. 31, so he's young. So you know, in uh, this kind of injury, the first uh, problem is uh, infection. And the infection problem is a very severe problem. So it means 
you need to have a perfect uh, skin coverage before to start any any other uh, option. Of course, it's absolutely impossible to imagine a prosthesis or something like that. So you have to you have to keep in mind that the nature is very strong, and uh, probably when you see uh, your uh, uh, image, it's very interesting to see that the 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 radiolinate joint seems correct in place and the radiolinate too. So in my opinion, it will be only to add a graft to, to maintain this uh, this system. I don't know exactly how you have to do that, but probably with the volar plate, not now, but uh, uh, after a few months now, it's uh, one month ago, I think. Uh, it's a yes. little Five one weeks. month ago. So I, can, I think you can start to use a big block maintaining only the uh, radio lunar joint and you'll see after that. But it's just my opinion. And after you can add an interposition in a second time, interposition between the, the scaphoid and the, the, the false radius, so the graft you created, if uh, you, you see that there is a possibility. If not, of course, it will be uh, radiocarpal, uh, radiocarpal fusion. So Carlos, it's to you now. Yes, so no, uh, if I understand, no graft for the moment, just we maintain the block and secondary uh, graft and reconstruction for, for you. Okay, so Carlos, you, uh, Caracas. Yeah. How, are you, how are you doing, my hello. friend? Hello, everybody. Hello. In uh, fact, I Very am. nice to see you. Nice to see you too, Alan. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, Dr. Marie, a uh, very challenged case. Uh, I would like to know in first place, what happened with the steloid, with the radial steloid. So, because in the first X-ray, I can see a little part of this zone, you know, I can see the, the radial steloid. However, in the CT scan, I cannot see it anymore. Um, the second thing that I want to propose is, I don't know if do you have any expertise in microvascular surgery in order to consider um, fibular um, vascularized uh, graph. And that, that's it uh, that I would like you to consider. Abdelrahman, I think uh, it is a... Uh... It, it yes. is a good option. Uh, just before to, to, to hear Lucien and Ismail, it's a big option because I, I think about, of course, this kind of option. You know that I, I have uh, made a lot of transfer of uh, fibula in my life for many reasons. And of course, you can harvest the, the head of fibula and, to cre and create the space. But uh, uh, you, you don't have to forget where work uh, our friend and uh, uh, maybe it's a complicated option, but uh, you're right. It, it's a very beautiful option. It's it's possible to to take the the uh, articular surface between the 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 head of yeah. the fibula and uh, and uh, yeah, yeah to obtain that is a possibility, of course. Yes. And uh, uh, Adam, would you have any comment to uh, answer, uh, Carlos? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, first, uh, uh, if you notice on the x-rays, what you see on the lateral x-ray is actually the volar rim of the lunate fossa. It's actually not the radial side. Oh, right. Right. On the, the x-rays oh. or the okay. CT scan? On the x-rays yeah. and the CT scan. There is, okay. there is no... And even on the initial image during the operation, you can see through the radius, the whole uh, carpus. So it was, there, that is what is available. It's mostly a volar rim. And uh, mostly covering, uh, articulating, I'm sorry, with the lunate rather than with the scaphoid. My uh, other opinion, we do have some microsurgical expertise. We have done free fibula before, but we are trying because the area is traumatized to not rely on vessels during the surgery because this is a gunshot injury. It is not a clean cut injury. So there might be some other soft tissue trauma that we are not uh, able to uh, observe now. I, on my own, uh, looked for cases similar to this in tumor cases, actually, 
and found a lot of literature discussing defects in giant cell tumors of the distal radius in high grade ones. And uh, I saw some people doing uh, free fibula, vascularized and non-vascularized. Yeah. And I also yeah. saw so, some people yeah. doing a translocation of the alma. So I, I think Very Professor Bulen, yes, Carlos, I think Professor Bulen has a lot to say after Lucian, uh, we, you will, we will allow you to speak. I think Professor Bulen has uh, something to say about this option of uh, fibula, uh, vascularized fibula. Um, Yes. Uh, how are you? Uh, hi, everybody else. Thank you uh, for joining. I, uh, I, uh, when I saw this X-ray, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, you can do a articular surface again with opposite side of the fibula because you have to turn it. Uh, the proximal side of the fibula uh, resemble as uh, articular surface uh, 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 to radius. Uh, it uh, uh, seems as like a radius dis uh, distal articular surface. That's why you don't need uh, a, a macrovascular uh, transportation in this kind of case. You can uh, take a little uh, long fibula and you uh, put it intramedullary uh, and the uh, vascularized uh, with intramedullary uh, uh, circulation. And it may be uh, very useful in this kind of uh, surgery. And you have a, a articular surface in the distal radial nerve joint, and it may help uh, to uh, gain the rotation again and you need only articular surface for the uh, radio carpal, uh, proximal radio carpal joint. And you, uh, it's, it's possible to re, uh, reconstruction with proximal fibula to the opposite side. It is important. It is not in the same site. You must use uh, the fibula from the opposite side. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank uh, you, Professor you, Bulen. But yes. you don't need macrovascular uh, transportation. It's, it's possible to put it in intramedullary and it can be uh, revascularized, revascularized with the intramedullary circulation. Thank you. Thank you for your advice. Uh, I think it should help a lot. Now, the next uh, one is uh, Lucien. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, it's great Lucian. To be here. Nice to see you. Could you, uh, so, do you have some comments for this? Yeah, uh, um, I, I totally agree with Ismail. Uh, we know that uh, children, um, in children, we, we, we can reconstruct distal radius with uh, the proximal uh, fibula. And we, we can reconstruct also the ligaments with the collateral ligament of the, of the fibula. Um, but I wanted to, to ask, uh, how about soft tissues? What about the tendons now? Because I agree with Professor Matulen that uh, uh, the main problem now is the soft tissues and the infection. Um, and I wanted to know how about the, the extensor tendons and the soft tissues. Um, soft tissues that looked correctly now maybe won't support a second incision in the future. So um, I'm com quite concerned about it. So I want to, to ask uh, our colleague about extensor tendon and soft tissues now. Yes. Well, uh, concerning the extensor tendons, the second, third, and fourth extensor compartment are all lost. We need okay. to do grafting for them later on after reconstructing the bone. That's the plan. But we need okay. to see how we are going to reconstruct the joint first. So and working so the in, in these cases, uh, as it's a shotgun wound uh, and the tissues are not good, uh, I, sh I would think about the Chinese flap taking, out, uh, taking with it uh, also the, uh, um, the tendons, okay, the palmalis longus and the flexor radialis carpus. We can use it uh, to reconstruct the extensor tendon and we can put uh, a good tissue inside. We, you can do it also as a, 
as a not a free flap so if you don't have a, a lot of experience with free flaps you can do it also uh, as a perpendicular flap and it will be a good solution in for the initial state and then i would think about uh, reconstructing the bone Oh, thank you, uh, Lucien, for uh, your. Uh... Just, just, just uh, yes. if I can, just one. Yes, of course. Once I have a, I have a patient who is a, a loss of all the extensor tendon, and I harvest a pedial flap from the foot with uh, the extensor of a of a foot fingers uh, to reconstruct uh, by a vascularized uh, uh, free transfer. And it worked perfectly. So you have some time to keep in mind all the solutions. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I think the last uh, comment uh, from the panelists would be from uh, Dr. Fartera. Uh, are you with us? Because uh, hello, Dr. Uh, Fartera. Hi. Nice to see you. How are you doing? Yeah. Hi, Alam. Thank you very much for the invitation. Hi, Professor Madulam. Hi, everyone. Uh, no. Uh, uh, I have a, I have a very very little uh, com commentary. I agree with the the treatment of the the, uh, the comment uh, this stuff, and I teach my fellow uh, the, this this uh, task. The, this uh, patient has a two stage. You see, the first stage is the treatment of the open fracture. Okay, open fracture and damage of the soft tissues. Uh, damage of the skin and the on the tendon. This is my my third up uh, the, my third option. The treatment is uh, treatment of the, the the this this topic. And the second part is the reconstruction. Well, yeah, in the reconstruction of the radio uh, distal radius or the radio carpal joint is uh, we, uh, we have a uh, several possibilities. Huh? Uh, and for me, the most important is maintain of the the radial lunate uh, joint in, in this moment in the first moment and the second moment we we have a several possibility of the uh, a bone graft or not vascularized or vascularized bone graft or use of the arthrodesis or use of the the any possibility many possibilities this is my commentary now no more thank you so in uh, you. two two steps uh the reconstruction not in the uh, in the first stage. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Abdelrahman, uh, uh, yes. Last, last thing. Of course. Abdelrahman, if you, uh, dear, dear colleagues, look at the incredible, beautiful x ray we obt uh, Abdelrahman obtained in this patient in this condition. So uh, the patient uh, is lucky to have you as doctor, Abdelrahman, and I would like to congratulate you because the axis of the radius are abs absolutely perfect. Thank you. Yes, uh, congratulations. Uh -huh. Thank you, uh, Christoph. Um, Rahman, I, uh, I hope we, we helped you with uh, all, all this, uh, this advice. Uh, do, do you have a last comment or Clément, do we have any question from the attendees, please? Um, yes, Adam, we have a question for the free slab, but I think that we, we answer it, so. Um, yes. What was the question? Please, you, could you remind us? Yes, the question? Uh, the question was after a one month injury, uh, should it be clear to announce the time for a free flap? A free flap? Okay. And uh, Lucian, you, you can remind, uh, please, uh, uh, you can uh, answer once again to this question, maybe, to remind our attendees your point of view. My point of view? Yes. My point of view is, is to, to work on the soft tissues first, uh, doing a flap, uh, or a Chinese flap, uh, taking um, the the tendons also and reconstruct the tendons and make a good coverage, and then I will go to a second uh, operation, reconstruction. Uh, uh, reconstruction the radius. I think the fibula is a good chance. Thank you, uh, Lucien. The uh, last, uh, yes. Don't, don't forget to put cement. When you do that, it's a good idea to cover the skin and to put cement to replace the bone. Thank you Waiting for this uh, tip. Yes. Operation. Thank you, Professor Boulet. The last, last comment for this case because we have uh, uh, other cases, please. Uh, you, can, you can cover the uh, soft tissue with uh, local flap. Uh, it, it could be easy. 
Uh, I know it is not easy to uh, do uh, macrovascular surgery everywhere. That's why it is good options to cover it with transposition flaps. It's possible. And uh, I add the same thing. You have to put uh, 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 anti uh, cement with antibiotics uh, in this case. After that, uh, you, if you will uh, uh, save about the infection, you will put a, a, a bone graft uh, with articular surface or not. You will decide it after the uh, uh, first treatment. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope we helped you with the case. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> yes, thank you, everyone, for uh, your advice. And I think we uh, can move uh, to the second case, uh, which is the case uh, from uh, Santiago de Chile, AWBT Santiago de Chile, with uh, Dr. Dr. Falquera, presented by uh, Javier Sanchez uh, Saba. Uh, it is a case of uh, scaphoid non union management with a uh, special treatment, which is not uh, very famous uh, here in uh, France, at least. Javier, are you ready, please, uh, to share your screen? Hello, everybody. Hello. I wish the screen. Okay. Perfect. I, uh, with the, uh, I will just stop you uh, a little. Uh, please, everyone, uh, uh, we will launch uh, two polls during this, uh, three polls during the, uh, this uh, presentation. Feel free to uh, answer the polls about uh, the preferred therapeutic option, etc. Thank you. Javier, you are allowed to speak now. Okay. Hello, my name is Javier Sanchez. I'm from Argentina and I'm working doing my IWC fellowship in the clinic in NISA of Santiago de Chile. And we want to present uh, a patient with a scaphoid non union. And we choose this topic because we want to show what is our experience and este, want uh, and, and our preference and which is uh, the, the recommendations on the bibliography. Sorry. Okay. Uh, you, are, you, you asked us, uh, Javier, a uh, question about uh, the best uh, exam, amazing exam. That's right. Yes, what is your preferred property image exam if you if you have a, a, a non-union in the scaffold? Okay, so uh, I think we can ask our uh, panelists, uh, uh, maybe uh, our fellows. Uh, we have uh, Mart, uh, are you with us? Mart or Serene? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I'm Hello. with you. How are you doing? Hello. Yes, fine. Uh, so I would like uh, to choose uh, for uh, MRI because MRI I can see whether the vascularis is uh, is vascularis or not uh, from the if we can do uh, gado gado enhanced gadolinium we can see the 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 vascularis or not the scaphoid non union. Other than that, we can use also CT scan, but uh, for to see the vascularized or not, we can use the uh, MRI from Gado and Hans. Thank you. So MRI and CT scan, Serene, you do you you want to say uh, to answer the question? Oh, yeah, I prefer a CT scan because like um, vascularity. I mean, you you it used to be like vascularity is the 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 important. There is the importance in vascular uh, vascularization of the scaphoid, but these days, you know, people don't really look at vascularization a lot. Um, CT scan is quite useful to look at the evidence of uh, humpback deformity and the the sort of the. We don't hear you, Karin. Serine, Serine, we don't hear you. Your micro. Okay. We hear you now. Can you guys Please. hear me? Sorry. Yes, yes, don't worry, don't worry. Recording in progress. 
Serene? Serene? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, no, so, um, sorry. Uh, no, uh, MRI used to be important for to look at the vascularity, but personally, I prefer a CT scan just to look at the shape of the scaphoid, the, humbag, the presence of humbag deformity, how much uh, bone graft to sort of uh, uh, harvest. So personally, I prefer a CT scan. Okay, so CT scan for serine and uh, MRI plus uh, uh, CT scan maybe for uh, more. Uh, could you, uh, Clément, do we have uh, a uh, So, uh, no. Uh, uh, Javier, could you go on with uh, the case, please? Okay, so uh, in this case, we have a 24 years old male hand, uh, right hand patient. He Uh, fell into the floor while skateboarding and he presented several months later with, uh, with pain uh, during session. And, I, and we are agree with the CD scan uh, that is our preferred method to, to this patient. And we request uh, both X-ray and CT scan and we are shown a focus of non-union in the scaphoid. CD scan uh, showed, uh, in this case, uh, assist and sclerotic change, uh, and they were associated with a DC deformity. And we prefer the CT scan because, uh, based in, the, in some articles who evaluate the viability of the fragment, uh, this one, for example, focuses in the question about how to determine the viability and the vascularization status, and they found that the X-ray are insufficient and MRI has a limited role. So the gold standard they define they, uh, is, is defined by the histology. So, sorry. So uh, histopathological uh, signs, there is. histopathological sign of bone healing are neovascularization, good cell density, osteoformation, and the presence of tubulars, while sclerosis sees lack of cells are, are uh, associated with poor bone vitality. And they correlate these findings with a CT scan and define three patterns, trabecular, sclerotic, and fragment uh, pattern. And uh, trabecular case tend to heal uh, and are a good prognosis factor, while sclerotic and fragment scan has a delayed healing on, on non-union. And they have a better relationship with CT scan than MRI has with histology. So uh, what would you prefer uh, to treat this patient uh, right now? I see Lucien uh, uh, wanted to, uh, to make a comment in the, in the beginning of the case. Lucien. Um, I, I actually, to, to, to answer the first question, I actually do both. I think it's Mm, they, they, they give you different information, MRI and CT scan. Not everybody can do them both. Between them, I prefer to do a CT scan because it, it helps me to, to better um, schedule my, my surgery. And in this case, uh, if I can answer the, the poll, uh, I would do an, uh, an arthroscopic bone graft without any doubt. Uh, Atroscopic okay. bone graft, okay, for you. Atroscopic uh, bone graft, it's, it works um, beautifully in these cases. And I will take the graft from the distal radius. Um, Zeidenberg, Ezekiel Zeidenberg showed us how uh, core decompression of distal radius actually helps uh, the scaphoid and the lunate to heal in these cases. So I, I like this te technique. And we're going to say everything in the, in the beginning, Lucien. Tell us. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, I have a question for Lucian. Uh, this this graph um, will be vascularized or not vascularized? Uh, what this graph? No, no, non-vascularized from in uh, atroscopic bone graft. Okay, non -vascularized. non vascularized. No, 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 no. You know, it is the arthroscopic bone graft uh, we use uh, just with the arthroscopy. We uh, harvest uh, some graft from the radius and just with the arthroscopy, uh, uh, we uh, insert the graft inside All right. All right. Uh, non union uh, okay. area. Uh, we will have some video after. Uh, after we have uh, Professor who would like to make the comment at this stage of the, uh, of the, of the case. 
Um, if you use arthroscopic way, it is good to uh, do it with arthroscopic way, but if not, you can take Waller vascularized bone graft from the distal radius, uh, could be helpful. And in the same time, you can correct the humpback deformity and uh, it is easy to do. And uh, I saw um, distal, uh, uh, the star radius, uh, 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 you, but you must uh, take the bone graft near the uh, distal radiolunar joint. It's not easy to uh, reach the vascularized bone graft uh, to the uh, uh, third arthrosis area, and you you have to get the get the uh, graft near the uh, distal radiolunar joint. But it is very difficult and uh, it is not safe, and you have to uh, uh, you have to uh, be careful to don't damage the articular surface of the distal radiolunar joint. But it's uh, both uh, choice is possible. So thank you, uh, Professor Boulan. So uh, for you, uh, maybe uh, palmar vascularized bone graft. We have the arthroscopic uh, bone graft from Lucian. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, make a comment? Uh, maybe Gust uh, Gustavo Gomez. I will. Uh, I will you are to... hiding. Uh. Yes, Serin. Yes. Hello. Dr. Gustavo, go, go first. <laughs> As you yeah. want, sir. Okay, hello, how are you? Hello, hello Gustavo. Hi, we are very, I'm very happy to you. see you. Uh, I'm very happy to see you all, guys. Well, uh, I think that here um, the main problem is that not only we have the, the, the scaffold on union, but also um, we can see a VC deformity. We have a lunate in extension. So um, we have to open the, the, the gap between the proximal pole of the scaphoid and the distal pole of the scaphoid and correct the original morphology of the scaphoid. So one, I, I, I'm, I agree with uh, everything that you mentioned, uh, some techniques. And I would like to add that in, in these cases, we uh, sometimes obtain the um, graft from the uh, anterolateral corner of the uh, distal radius. Yeah. So, uh... and, and, and in the same procedure, not only you 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 harvest the bone graft, but also you can do a core decompression in in the same procedure. We we can see uh, where you are from. Gustavo, <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah. for your, your, your comments. So, uh, I think, thank uh, you, yes, uh, uh, Fabien, maybe you could, uh, you could go and move on with uh, the case, please. Okay, well, uh, based on, on this article, they propose an algorithm and they define the with this algorithm three types, uh, four types or patterns. The type one has trabecular, type two has some sclerosis, the type three has a sclerosis pattern, and the four has fragmentation. And based on this localization and, and the non union, they command different types of bone graft to associate. Or case has a type two uh, pattern, so we decide to perform. Uh, internal fixation associates with non-vascular bone graft uh, in an arthroscopic way. And to show you, we perform an arthroscopy through the radicarpal and mid-carpal portal, through the MCIU and MCR and accessory portal for scaphoid, we initially visualize the pseudoarthrosis area and using the proof, we demonstrate the instability. Then we separate both fragments using an osteotomy to resect the fibrosis. Initially, through the mid-carpal portal, we resect the digitalized uh, tissue using curettes and, and a shaver, as we see in this video. Then uh, we, can we can look through the mid-carpal joint, and we introduce uh, our shaver from the radicarpal joint and resect the digitalized tissue from the most proximal area. Uh, 
And finally, we perforate the bone with a, a keyword, the right, the joint, and a, and and then we dry the joint and evidentiate the bleeding of the fragment, thus dem demonstrating the positive green test, as we see here. So agree with the comments. We perform an arthroscopic technique. We mobilize the, the focus of cell arthrosis and associate with this, then we perform uh, uh, under radioscopic guidance, uh, metaphysical cordless compression, also obtaining bone tissue for the distal radius. And this was in correlation uh, with these uh, topics that uh, that uh, evidence that the cordless compression produce a biological stimulus being a simple, reproducible, and versatile techniques. And of course, we then reduce the DC, like Gustavo say, uh, using the lean side maneuver. And in these ways, uh, since we already saw that the scaffolding uh, ligament was competent, we also reduced the position of the proximal scaphoid. And using radioscopic assistance, we place keywords transverse to the non union line and place it in a polar region to avoid the handbag collapse again. Then, uh, with the second keyword, we avoid the rotation deformities and we perform our arthroscopy again to confirm uh, the proper keyword placement and adequate reduction of the scaphoid. Uh, and once we confirm it, we place an unvascular outside uh, bone graft to fill the defect. And finally, we place uh, in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this surface, very plus, which is fibrin, uh, for a protective FA, it would have avoiding chondrolysis of the exposed uh, cancerous bone. I don't know, Falam, if you have some question or if I continue. Uh, I think you, 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 can, uh, you can go uh, go on with the case after uh, until the end and after uh, we will discuss, uh, if Perfect. you don't mind, Javier. Perfect. Based on bibliography, uh, there are uh, some articles uh, to take account. Uh, Wall, for example, note that vascularity doesn't correlate with MRI or green tests, and they consider the histologic uh, uh, like the gold standard. But since tissue cannot be obtained prior to surgery, they look for the factor that is more often associated uh, with healing. They found that MRI and green tests uh, did not have a significant relationship with vitality, but they found an association between the histological presence of trabecula and vitality. And they conclude that the most important thing is to debride everything and place a non vascularized bone graft associated with absolute stability in the reduction. But on the other hand, there are some authors like Kaloya that consider that the most important thing is the absolute stability achieved. And they believe that the bone graft is not even necessary. And they, as they show in his area of uh, 58 patients, where 55 has bone healing observed that poor prognosis factor associated with sclerosis in the tomography, a negative a green test uh, during surgery and smoking. Based on this, we, uh, in our patient, decide to obtain maximum stability by placing a screw uh, associated with keywords to avoid mobility of the scaphoid. And we obtain these final results. About the implant, uh, the most important thing is to obtain the maximum stability uh, of our reduction, and we use keywords, and we can use keywords or screw. Uh, and there are some studies where compare both techniques, and they have no significant difference in result in the treatment of scaphoid union. But in the case of use, uh, keywords place them in a divergent way to have positive results like uh, <coughs> of this work, which obtained close to 19% of consolidation. In our case, this is the uh, evolution in the immediately postoperative period. And there is the evolution at four months where we can see sign of consolidation in x-rays. So we confirm it by CT scan showing more than 50% of continuity of the trabecula. 
associated with nearly equal mobility to the contrary drug with uh, pain-free and no functional limitation in our patient. So we can conclude that arthroscopy is a tool, uh, is a useful tool for the diagnosis and treatment of the scaphoid non-union. Uh, CT scan help us uh, to assess the vitality of the scaphoid. Healing depends uh, on biology and stability. Biology can be helped with cordless compression and non-vascularized bone graft. And stability should be maximum and can be achieved with screw or divergent place keywords. Thank you, Javier. Could you uh, stop sharing your screen? Perfect. Uh, I think we will have a lot of, of uh, question for uh, this case. Thank you for the great presentation. I think first I've seen, uh, I don't know, uh, either Professor Blend or Lucien who uh, would like to make a comment. Lucien, if you want. Um, I'm um, uh, the, the presentation was beautiful. Uh, I use uh, the same technique. There will be always the never ending story. I use a dry technique and mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it's uh, easier to to work uh, uh, in a dry circumstances, but it's my opinion. Um, then another thing that I do different, uh, I use a uh, vertebra biopsy needle uh, to take uh, in a many invasive uh, way the bone from the distal radius uh, and I use the same needle to put the bone inside the the, um, the, the gap inside the scaphoid it's it's very uh, useful because uh, you showed when you put the graft uh, the graft enters in the articulation and um, it's quite tricky. You need to do have a lot of experience to put it inside the gap. Uh, sometimes it goes around the, the articulation with, with the needle. It goes inside the, the gap immediately and you don't need to, to waste time uh, uh, in uh, seeking the graft in, in, the, uh, the, the, graft in the articulation. And um, that's it. I, I agree with everything you say. Mm -hmm. I think there is still a place of non of vascularized uh, bone graft, uh, but mainly in revision surgery. When I have a failure of uh, non vascularized bone graft uh, technique, I prefer to go vascularized for the patient. It's for me. It's more secure for for the definitive. Uh, uh, but I do it only as a revision surgery. Thank you, uh, Javier. Yes, I agree with you, Lucian, and we do the, the technique of metaphysical core descompression because we, we have a very good result with this technique associated with the non-vascularized bone graft. So that's the, the, the way we obtain the, the, the non-vascularized bone graft, and we perform the, the metaphysical core descompression in the same act. So we, we do the technique in this way to, to do both uh, treatment in, in once. I have a question actually for uh, Dr. Jorquera, Javier, and uh, also Gustavo uh, Gomez, uh, if you are uh, still with us. Um, uh, do we have any place left for the uh, for you, for you, in your opinion, for the metaphysical call the compression only without uh, associated graft? Because uh, Martin Caloya is one of the uh, advice, uh, the recommendation of Martin Caloya to do it uh, only to do only the core decompression, even when there is a, a big cyst and a huge impact deformity. What, uh, could you share your opinions, please? Hi, Rene, Alan. Yes, I, Rene. Yes, I, ha I, have a, I have a little commentary. I, I agree with Lucien. And um, I can only uh, congratulate that my fellow, the presentation is beautiful. Uh, yes. it's, the, it's perfect. It's fe perfect for me, all the videos and um, X-ray, I see, uh, congratulate. Huh? Uh, I, have, I have two commentaries. One, I use the hybrid arthroscopy, hybrid is dry and wet, okay? And the first time of the, my, my arthroscopy, I, I, I don't use a tourniquet, okay? In this moment, uh, with, uh, with uh, the wet arthroscopy, I, I don't use tourniquet, and a uh, resection of the fibrils and cysts in the, in, in the mid carpal joint on the in the, the focus of the, the no unit. And in this moment, 
where not only get I, I probe of the what, what is the, the the vascularization of the, the proximal pole and the distal pole. Uh, Martin Caloya uh, uh, create uh, the the most important part of the vascularization is the distal part. This is the the Martin Caloya opinion. Distal part in the arthroscopic view. When when I see uh, the the proximal and um, distal part. The, 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 what is the, the, the possibility of the, vas, uh, the vascularization of breathing in the distal part is the most important. In my opinion, two parts, okay? When I see the, the proximal part breathing in, in the second part, I, I, we, put, we put up the tourniquet. I'm working in the, in the sun with dry or wet uh, anywhere, okay? Any, anywhere. Uh, the, the, the core decompression is, in, in my opinion, <clears throat> my, my, my first option is uh, to or take uh, the, the bone graft, more, sal more salicylate bone graft in this zone. And uh, in this moment, compress on the, in the inside to the distal rail, inside to the distal rail, compress in the hydra and produce uh, the, the, the compression of the hyperemia this, this, this song uh, and in this moment take the bone graft and uh, uh, com complete of the, the, the area of the bone graft inside to the distal rail. This is the this is the technique. Yeah. Gustavo, do, do you have a, a the same opinion or the other opinion for the for, for the compression? Gustavo, we are waiting for your opinion, please. <laughs> Argentina. Huh? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Uh, I, I, I totally agree. But uh, I think that um, for me, it doesn't makes too much sense to to throw the 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 bone graft. I think that in in when we perform the core decompression and we obtain this uh, graft, for me, uh, is is. Um, it's important to put it in in the so in the non union site. Um, I think uh, I, I I I never uh, throw out uh, the 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 bone graft. But what it's about important. Uh, sorry, yeah. what about the core decompression? Because uh, I think uh, most of uh, so the attendees that most of us so don't know really. It is only to put the curate and uh, to. Uh, to provoke a trauma on the the metaphys yeah. the radial yeah. metaphys, you know, or we don't took, uh, we don't take out uh, any bone when we do the only core decompression. Exactly. Yeah. When the core decompression, we in, in core decompression, we are trying to um, make the body to respond to some uh, thing, to some aggressive. Thing that we do, so we have to do a little window in the radial or the dorsal cortex. I always try to do it in the floor of the second compartment, and after that, I uh, retract the extensor tendons. I perform a window, and then I compact the the um, the, the bone graft, but. You you, you 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 can take out uh, bone graft or you can compress yeah. the bone graft inside the, the epiphysis. So if I if I take out <laughs> if I take out some uh, bone graft, I think uh, it's intelligent. It's very intelligent to put it in the in the non-union site. Okay. Alan, the, yes. the last the last commentary in this case, uh, in my opinion and my my team, uh, the the most important the most important part in the treatment of the scaphoid union vascularized uh, the problem of the, of the bleed is the maximal stability. This is the topic. Uh, 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 my my fellow uh, Javier. Uh, 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 told, told us what, what is the most important, the maximal stability, key wise, screw, screw and key wise, and the core decompression and the bone graft is the second part. 
this is the 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 Martin Caloya think that is most important maximal stability in, in good position. If you see if you see in the X-ray on the uh, CT scan, the the intentionally the position of the my screw is the polar part of the scaphoid. Uh, mm -hmm. When when yeah you can you can see uh, in, in this zone is the uh, when, when when we have the the scaphoid unit with cut back, you don't need compress, you need stability. Yeah, yes. and the, the position is in the, ah, Lucien, sorry. No worries. Lucien? Rene, I think that you 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 said that one of the most important things in this surgery is to put the screw uh, in the volar part. It's one of yes. the most important things of the surgery because it opens you the the. Uh, the distal part, okay, uh, and it corrects deformity, and it opens you the space like a boat to put in the yes. graft. So this is yes. the, one of the most important things in this surgery to put it as volar as possible. And when you don't put it as volar as possible, you see in the in the CT scan uh, that that part, the volar part, didn't uh, form bone. It it yes. remains without uh, consolidation, so you need to put the the the, the, the screw as volar as possible. I, I totally okay. agree. With Rene. It's one of the most important things. Uh, uh, th uh, thank you, Lucien. Uh, uh, Clément, do we have any question from the attendees, please? Uh, um, yes, yes, Alam. There is a question for the for this case, yes. radio lunate wire for Javier. The question: is, Do you remove it at the end of the? Uh, the uh, intervention, or do you keep it? And uh, if you keep it, when do you remove it? The radilunar uh, keyword was placed uh, at uh, six weeks at least, and the scaphoid capital uh, wire was placed uh, until the, in the CT scan and show the, the consolidation, the bone healing. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? No, we no. have a comment, uh, a last maybe, a last comment from René or Professor Vulent. So. I, I have a question for my, for my fellow. Oh. <laughs> Javier. Last the, question what, to the uh, fellows. <laughs> uh, why you put the uh, scaffo capitate, why you put the scaffo capitate uh, keyword in the final part of the surgery? Why? Uh, and and, and the what case? Hmm? The, the principle is to obtain the, the maximum stability as we said, and, and in this case, this keyword uh, avoid the, the collapse and the rotation of the distal fragment. So uh, if I have any doubt about the fixation, I will put this, uh, this, this keyword everything. But if I have uh, a stable construct, Maybe it isn't necessary because uh, the most important thing that, that we say is the the stable the, the absolute uh, stability uh, that we can perform in, in in our surgery. For me, what is the most important ligament in the carpal? In in this case, because of the radius capital capital uh, ligament and that allows for the. Uh, handbag deformity, it's uh, like this uh, keyword protects against this deformity. What is the most, uh, what is the anatomically important of the, the dick in the, in this case? Well, uh, sorry. No, okay. In, in this case, the dick uh, has a proximal fiber that uh, connects in the, in the dorsal aspect of the wheels uh, between the, the scaphoid and the trichetum. And with these fibers, uh, it seems to, to be uh, an important factor to maintain the stability in the wheels. So uh, you need to, to have uh, uh, the proper position and the proper uh, reduction of the scaphoid to uh, be uh, sure that you have the uh, height, the adequate height and the adequate position of all this fragment to maintain the stability and in the future, uh, maintain the movement uh, without uh, pain. Uh, um, last yes. question, Alam. Yes. On the chat, uh, it's a question about, about the rehabilitation um, with the key wire inside the scaphoid. So maybe Javier can answer it. 
or anyone, please. Or oh, anyone, yes. Yes, about the rehabilitation, uh, the, re the most important is uh, the bone healing. So uh, we can we cannot uh, take off the keywords if we have not uh, bone healing because uh, it will produce some movement in the in the place that uh, we are trained with with the, the surgery. So we we maintain these keywords uh, until the bone healing was obtained. Professor Bulent and Lucian, and after I think we need to move uh, to the next uh, case, please. Uh, when you have a big bone defect, uh, you have to put fibrin glue before you put the bone graft uh, to uh, lose your uh, bone uh, to the joint line, uh, to the radial, uh, radiocarpal joint. If uh, I put uh, the Fibrin glue first, after then bone graft, after then fibrin glue again. Uh, it is useful to protect your bone graft in this uh, proper position. Uh, it may be helpful. Thank you. And uh, Lucien? Um, I wanted to ask you if you have in your experience also uh, associated uh, lesions to the, to the non-unions. Like in my experience, I have some uh, scaphalunate uh, ligaments uh, in which I, I do uh, a dorsal capsule that is like Matulen uh, described uh, in association of the bone graft. But I don't know if you have the, the same uh, experience. I see Lorenzo. Hello, Lorenzo. Hi. Hi. You want to yes. make a comment? Yeah, I managed to answer the, the very good question that uh, Lucian just asked. Actually, I agree. I totally agree. Um, I would say about almost 30% uh, of the patients have usually some partial instability of the scaffolding in space. Uh, and I usually do a, a dorsal capsule ligament repair uh, in the same time of the, of the graft. If I can just this make a comment. This is also my experience. Yes. I just, uh, just to make a comment about the Linstein maneuver to uh, correct the disease. Uh, because uh, there is a... Uh, Often the question uh, we need uh, the lynch, to correct the DT or not is the lynch chain maneuver. Uh, the, 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 the key wire for me is useful not only for uh, the DT, but also it helps for, uh, for reducing uh, the handbag. And uh, it works, uh, in my opinion, only if there is no scaphalinate instability associated. Is, uh, does anyone have a comment about this, the Lynch maneuver and uh, the interest of this, uh, this key wire? Dr. Jorquera, for example, or Javier. Javier, what to do? Yes. Uh, when, when we use the arthroscopy technique, we can see before the, the placement of this keyword if this ligament has any, any problem or not. So it's an important tool to, to arthroscopy, uh, like to see this, this lesion, this associated lesion. And, when, uh, and as you say, when the, with the lesion in mind over, we can reduce both the DC deformity and the proximal pole defect. And with this maneuver, uh, we can uh, open in the, the defect of the handbag. So uh, we, with, with this technique, we can uh, solve these, these two problems. Okay. And uh, yes, yes, uh, you, you agree, yes, Dr. Okay. Yes, I, uh, I agree that it's the same thing. We, get. we, we had a... a, a there a lot of experience in the in the, the ma management of the the the, the scaphoid unit and and uh, problem of the vascularized of the of the proximal pole and in the 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 last five or six years ago I don't use of the vascularized bone graft is a is a, a discussion okay I don't use with when I use this technique. And the hyperactroscopy, I when I see of the uh, bleeding in the proximal part, I don't use of the vascularizer. I use the bone graft and reduction of the handbag, reduction of the of the, uh, the, the the scaphoid. And we don't need um, five or six years. We don't need the use of the 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 vascularizer bone graft. 
It's my, okay. my, my, my experience. Hmm? Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for uh, all these comments. I think I would like just to uh, share uh, the polls uh, from the attendees. For the first question, which is your preferred preoperative imaging? We had a discussion between the CT scan and the MRI. The majority uh, of the attendees uh, voted for the CT scan, uh, close to 70%, so only 30% for the MRI. Uh, the next, uh, the other poll was uh, about uh, the preferred treatment uh, in this case. We have a we had 20% of the attendees for the vascularized bone graft, 47%, 15 attendees for the iliac crest bone graft. Uh, I don't know if they, they will change or not their mind after. 27% uh, for the arthroscopic bone graft only, and 7% for uh, other. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, for, uh, for the compression, uh, do you know, of, uh, have you ever used uh, the metaphysical cord decompression? 30% uh, know the, uh, the cord decompression, this technique. 32% uh, have never heard about this indication. So uh, uh, we are happy to we have shared it today. 9% uh, uh, already used it and 26% uh, uh, never used it. So uh, it was uh, just the first feedback of uh, the polls. Uh, I think uh, uh, we can move uh, to uh, Istanbul presentation now uh, with uh, Mort. Uh, are you with us, Mort? Yes. Please, can you uh, share your screen? We don't hear you, Mark. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, now it's okay. It's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm Hanifa Yusuf from Malaysia. I'm representing Istanbul International Risk Center. Today, I would like to share a case of cystic changes at the unassided lunate bone. This is 63 years old woman uh, presented with unassided left wrist pain for two years duration. On examination, there is tenderness on the ulna fovea, and there is positive unocouple stress test. X-ray examination, uh, X-ray radiograph showing cysts over the ulna side of the lunate bone, and there is 2 mm ulna positive variant. So, uh, my first question. What is the best possible diagnosis in this case? Good question. Uh, thank you. Both. I think uh, we can ask. Uh, we heard Serene, we heard uh, uh, Javier, uh, uh, anyone, Paola, uh, I can see Paola Ramirez, Francesca Teodono, Clement, Clement, <laughs> you could. Uh, Maybe uh, share your opinions, why not? Excuse me, yeah. Um, I, I don't know, you, you said that, uh, can, I, can I see the X-ray uh, again, please? This is uh, the X-ray? Yeah. PA, FP, and lateral view. Okay. I think that it could be a ulnar infection or a ulnar cyst. I think I will vote for the two, these two options. What what is the best you think the best possible diagnosis? Both uh, can, Maybe. but what is uh, the best it, possible it's, diagnosis? It's the best for me is ulnarsis. I see. Uh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Clément. I see that Luna Paola is. Paola Ramirez she wants uh, yeah. to participate. Give give yeah. her opinion, um, Paola. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Hello. Yeah, I think that ulnar impaction syndrome. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think that ulnar infection syndrome in this case um, is um, um, a, a good diagnosis. I, we at the x ray, if you can go back, um, we can see like a positive ulna. 
uh, variants and then the cyst, the uh, lunar bone must be uh, for the uh, constant uh, microtrauma uh, with both bones. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I see. Uh, thank you, Paula, for sharing your uh, your point of view. I can see Lucian. Uh, Lucian wanted to say something, and Carlos, one after the other, please. Yeah, um, I will say uh, Luna Luna sees, but whoever I would like to 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 hear about the comment about the um, piso triquetal joint. In the in the AP projection X-ray, um, I don't know. I uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I, it looked a, a quiet way or for me a kind of arthrosis. I don't know uh, the comments of the of the arm of the case. Okay. The piece of tricep. Okay, we will see. Yeah. I think we will have another imaging after. Uh, thank you, Carlos, for you. Uh, your comment, uh, Lucia wanted just to say something here before yeah, we go. I wanted yes. to say that um, I think also the the cyst, but uh, cyst and uh, impacted uh, impact uh, ulnar syndrome can uh, coexist. Um, maybe the problem we we see the cyst, but the problem is the the impact. Even if we don't see a, a ulna plus, uh, there is also dynamic uh, kind of uh, impacts. Um, and the MRI could be of a help to, to understand what is going. Uh, but uh, the, for me, I, I'm always going to, to arthroscopy in these cases. Okay, to arthroscopy, to, uh, uh, could you say uh, just a little more about what you, uh, what you look for in the, at the arthroscopy for uh, the attendees, please? Well, you, you can see the impact in arthroscopy. It's very easy to see it. And you can see also the cyst if it uh, interrup interrupted the, the dorsal uh, uh, cortex, because normally cyst doesn't give you any, uh, any symptoms. But if the, the cortex is interrupted, then, then it can be a problem. So you can see everything in arthroscopy. Yes. Uh, thank you, Lucian. Uh, Dr. Jorquera. Alan, uh, Alan I, I have a, a question. Yes. Uh, it's very important uh, the, the X-ray the other side. Okay, when 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 you when you have the diagnosis of the the unimpacted syndrome or uh, another another pathologist, you need the, the other side. Uh, we have we don't have the, the more information in this case. We need the, the other side uh, when 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 you have a. Uh, uh, when impaction in, in general in the other side is the when impaction and when when this we can see we can see of the difference in the x rays okay and for the uh, cyst. Mm. yes for the mm. cyst and also uh to compare the dynamic just simple or dynamic uh, x rays for the opposite side uh, okay. in, the, in the first in the first time uh, not not dynamic when i need uh, for example, see is the variance is one millimeter. I needed the dynamic and pronation yes. supination. Yeah, okay. When and I six. have a, a three millimeter, I don't need in, in pronation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have, I think, we have other Professor Boulad, Mel uh, Boulad. In uh, I know the case. That's why I I could uh, reply <laughs> this uh, question. Uh, the woman hasn't got any problem in the other hand. The other hand is okay and no uh, problem in the other hand. Thank you for uh, the precision. Uh, but I think you can go on with uh, your presentation. Okay, what uh, further investigation uh, do you like uh, to do? Any, no point? I'll do an MRI. MRI for MRI, Siren. Yes. yes. Okay. So I this think is uh, the MRI yeah. image. MRI T1 image uh, showing hypo intensity over T1 over the ulna side of the lunate bone. And this is the dynamic image. T2 MRI image showing hypo intensity over the ulna side of the, of the lunate bone. 
Do we need any further investigation? Any one we can uh... also perform a CT scan. CT scan showing uh, multiple cysts over the lunate bone. So another question, what is your surgical plan? I think we uh, will st stop uh, a little here. Uh, this moment, uh, who would like to, uh, our young colleagues, who uh, Javier, the reservoir, <laughs> would like well, to, uh, to uh, yeah. hear your opinion. First of all, uh, I think it's important to to think that uh, the patient complains about uh, the the ulnar pain, and she complains with ulnar deviation. No, it's okay. What? Unassisted wrist pain. She complained of unassisted wrist pain uh -huh. and positive under couple uh, stress test. Right. It's like uh, with the clinic and the image, it's like to me, like a, um, an online impactation of in my surgical plane as, as we, uh, I am learning this, this pathology now. And, and I think that uh, there is a, a possibility to, to treat in, uh, with onashore osteotomy to treat the, the cuit to the cuit, the, um, the ulnar plus variants and uh, with arthroscopy assistance we can show the status of the the tfcc and and we can show the the surface of the lunate so i think with these two these two techniques uh, we can uh, assess from the status of the the joint and uh, trade the, the symptomatology and the, the problem of the patient so Javier, for you, there is no place for uh, an arthroscopy with on, only wafer here in, in this case for you. Could you explain I, us? Uh, I, I have seen only one wafer procedure and in this patient and with a lot of, of comment uh, of wafer, wafer procedure, uh, I, I think that uh, patient having a, a very good uh, Outcome. Period uh, before uh, result. Uh, result. Yes, after the, the wafer procedure. In fact, uh, in in a webinar, um, I don't know how. Uh, I don't remember the name of, of, of the doctor, but uh, it's, uh, it's not a problem. Just tell us. When, when some when, when some uh, talked about the wafer procedure. They said that uh, you you are uh, doing uh, an an killing of the surface of the the distal ulnar, and if you could uh, short the the ulnar and repair the TFCC, there is a solution that uh, could be uh, less aggressive to the surface of the distal ulnar. Yes, this is, uh, uh, but uh, you know. Uh... I agree there is a yeah. two options, uh, but uh, yes, uh, but in uh, the literature, we don't have uh, really, really uh, we don't have some uh, some evidence of the superiority of uh, one technique uh, to another, okay. and, uh, just from a, a little, uh, yes, uh, I agree. Thank you for your uh, great comment, Javier. Uh, yeah. I really would like to yeah. Yes, of course, who who would like to comment here? Sorry. Paula, yeah. Yeah. Paula yeah, yeah. I think that. Yeah, I think um, uh, it here is a, a key point is the arthroscopy because, um, um, as Javi said, uh, we can assess the state of the TSCC and also with the mid uh mid carpal um, portal we can assess the state of the cartilage of the um, hemate because uh, we had to rule out like a Hulk syndrome as well because that would support even more uh, the infection, like ulnar infection syndrome. Okay, so uh, thank you uh, for, uh, for this comment. So um, uh, you uh, first the arthroscopy to uh, check the TFCC for you. Am I right? Yes. Thank you, uh, Paola.
who wanted to say to to do another comment serene you wanted to say something yeah i wanted to say something but i think it's pretty been addressed personally i've i've um i would put a scope to assess the TFCC, if there is some perforation or central perforation of the TFCC, which uh, sort of suggests that there is a possibility of a ulnar couple abutment syndrome, then I'll probably perform a arthroscopic wafer procedure then. then. Um, and then I would also assess the lunate particular surface. I'm not sure whether what do we do with the lunix, lunate cysts. Um, so I'd like to ask the panelists whether like, is there like a role in like addressing lunate cysts with bone graft or do we just leave it alone? I think we will uh, go on. Thank you, uh, Terry, with the question. I think we will go on with the, the case and after we will discuss because we will see there are there is some surprise that okay. were, were prepared by the <laughs> by Istanbul. Mark, please. Your, your, uh, can you share your... Um... <laughs> Uh, thank you for uh, all the comments from the panelists. So what uh, has been done? So first, uh, we perform uh, atroscopic examination uh, using the three four port the viewing portal. We first check chondral uh, chondral condition of the lunate bone. There is chondral defect over the inner side inner side of the lunate. Using the prop uh, from the CR portal we can see there is a chondral defect over another side of the lunate. Then we perform a arthroscopic sidenobectomy and, and over the radiocouple joint. Uh, following sidenobectomy, the FCC uh, was intact. Intact the FCC was noted. Then uh, we do arthroscopic debridement of the lunate using the shaver. We divide all the uh, degenerated, elevated, and unstable cartilage of the lunate. We also reset uh, using the bone cartilage all the unhealthy cartilage from the CR working portal. After initial debridement, we inspect uh, the, the joint, radiocarpal joint from the 3-4 bearing portal. Here it's showing that two-third radial side of lunate was intact. Only one-third anal side of lunate is divided, which is over the TFCC. The lunate bone two-third over the radial side over the lunate posa was intact, only one third anal side of the lunate is divided. And post debridement, initial debridement, no contact with TFCC over the divided area. This is one third of the anal side. This is cardio, uh, two third over the radial side of lunate over the lunate posa. After that, we change viewing portal to the CR portal for better visualization of the lunate cyst post debridement. This is inside cyst cavity post uh, lunate debridement. For better visualization, and we look for any other unhealthy cartilage or unhealthy chondral tissue for further debridement. After that, we do further debridement using four five working portal and six R viewing portal using the shaver and bone curitage. Post debridement, uh, post debridement, we do final examination over the CR working portal. This is the lunate cyst post debridement. There is no more contact between the lunate cyst and TFCC. And this is a trichotrum.
and further examination from the MCU portal was done uh, to look for uh, integrity of the SL and LT ligament. So there is drive to sign over the LT ligament, uh, suggestive of uh, grade four dislocation of uh, LT injury, negative working chair sign, and intact SL ligament. This is hymen and this is capitate over the lunate bone. The SL uh, ligament was intact. Then we perform uh, examination from the MCR viewing portal. There is a dorsal capsular detachment over the trichotrum. This is trichotrum. And there is dorsal capsular detachment over the trichotrum. Then after that, we uh, perform uh, dorsal capsular ligamentous repair by the technique described by Christopher, Christopher Matolin et al. We pass the suture, two suture from the radio couple, three, four radio couple portal to the dorsal capsule and intrinsic ligament of the LT and then receive it, retrieve it to the MCR uh, portal. And then we, 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 we externalize it from the two dorsal capsule and tie it to each other and then we put it back to the to the joint. And then we tie it to each other. And post uh post uh distal tightening the luno Tricotal ligament joint was well, well reduced. After that, we perform the proscopic ima uh, imaging before we release the traction. This is the site of the lunate, uh, ulnar side of the lunate, proximal ulnar side of the lunate that has been divided. And then, uh, assistant uh, extend the wrist and we do a proximal final tightening and then put uh, the in ascension position by the spring for three weeks and followed by next spring for another three weeks. So we call this technique as a reverse wafer procedure for ulnar impaction syndrome. So what are different between uh, this technique from the classic arthroscopic wafer procedure so this uh, reverse, uh, the principle of uh, treatment for ulnar infection syndrome is we want to disinfect the ulnar couple load. So in the arthroscopic wafer procedure, they disinfect by doing uh, resecting over the dome of the ulnar head as a uh, red line here. Then for our uh, technique, we disinfect from the opposite side of the classic uh, arthroscopic wafer procedure, we disinfect uh, the undercouple load from the ulna sided. So this technique is suitable for intact uh, TFCC as in our cases. So for arthroscopic wafer procedure, usually they, they do to the central tear of TFCC, or if there is intact TFCC, we have to iatogenic, uh, do central, uh, iatogenic central tear of uh, TFCC. And it also uh, can violate the joint, but this technique uh, does not uh, violate the joint, but only is limited to 2 mm of the ana positive variant. So this is uh, our algorithm uh, for treatment of ana infection syndrome. The two classic techniques for treatment of uh, ana infection syndrome is ana shortening osteotomy and wafer procedure, whether it's open or arthroscopic wafer procedure. So both techniques have 
all advantage and disadvantages. For, for the ANA positive uh, variant, if more than 4 mm, we prefer to do ANA shortening osteotomy. If between 2 to 4 mm, we prefer to do arthroscopic wafer procedure. But in the case of 2 mm ANA positive variant and TFCC was intact, we prefer to do this new technique reverse wafer procedure. So in that in this case, we can avoid doing iatrogenic TFCC center tear and also avoid using uh, the LUJ portal arthroscopic or arthroscopic wafer procedure. So uh, for the past, uh, from 2013 to 2020, we uh, have done about, we have about 14 uh, cases. Uh, up to now, they maybe have uh, about 20 cases. So the mean age of patient 48, the follow time 42, and the issuing significant improvement was observed post-operatively in the dash score and quick dash score for 13 patients. And 13 out of 40 patients reported being being highly satisfied with the results. So this is our pending uh, publication for this technique. So in conclusion, the reverse wafer procedure offer an alternative option for treating ulnar infection syndrome with an intact TFCC. Meet the result of this newly described technique uh, promising. Any question? Thank you, uh, Ismail, for this very, very nice presentation. And I think you already uh, answered some of the questions we uh, had before. Could you uh, stop sharing your screen, please, uh, Max? Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, I think we will have uh, a lot of questions. Uh, Lucia, I think you uh, wanted to uh, talk, please. Lucien, we don't hear you, please. Uh, up. Yeah, I have a, a quite good experience with the reverse uh, buffer um, uh, procedure. We also, with Riccardo Lucchetti, uh, uh, described all the phases of this procedure on uh, the the book of uh, on uh, arthroscopy of the wrist uh, of uh, of Bain and Badia. Um, we do it mostly when uh, the TFCC is intact and you have a dynamic, uh, a dynamic uh, impaction. Um, sometimes uh, uh, the, the, the ulna goes uh, too much throughout the carpus and um, it, it creates an, uh, a degeneration of the, of the cartilage and of the LT uh membranous uh, ligament and uh, we also do the the reverse buffer procedure and we have uh, very good results with it um that's it thank you uh lucian what do you have to answer to this uh mock uh professor bullet this comment hello hello uh, thank you uh, for Hanifa. Uh, he shared the case very well. Uh, and, uh, he, he was in our clinic for three months and he did a lot. Thank you for all. Uh, and uh, thank you for you to uh, give me some opportunity to share our uh, experience. And uh, it's, uh, I think it is not uh, published yet. Uh, somebody else do this uh, technique, but uh, it is not easy uh, to decide the, to make a decision when you have an intact TFCC uh, in ulnar positive variants. Uh, it is not uh, uh, easy to debride all TFCC central site and to the vapor. And uh, in this kind of pa patients, in this kind of case, uh, we decide to make a reverse paper. And we, when you debride the uh, lunate, it is not uh, make an impaction on the on that side of the uh, TFCC uh, uh, and uh, radial side of the TFCC. And 
uh, it is the same procedure as like a, a wafer and uh, we did, did the wafer procedure in the reverse side it is uh, it is easy and it is uh, you you have to debride the chondral tissue and uh, you you did a little more and uh, you uh, you do the same uh, idea and uh, it is useful uh, and, uh, you can do it with the radio ulnar joint uh, arthroscopy but it's not easy and it is uh, more complex uh, that's why uh, the procedure is e easier than the other one thank you Thank you for your comment. Uh, anyone else uh, has uh, any comment in the in panelist or any experience with uh, this reverse wafer procedure? No, so uh, Lucien uh, told us that this uh, book, this, uh, uh, this technique. Yes. Yes, yes, we use it. We use it. Uh, I, I, Ricardo Lucchetti uh, taught me that technique and he also publicated um, in, uh, a book uh, of our uh, wrist arthroscopy. And we will have also uh, the series of uh, Istanbul. Uh, yeah, it's great. I'm, I'm happy. So, um, now, uh, Clément, are you with us? Uh, do we have any questions from the attendees? Yes. Please? Yes, of course. No, we don't have any question, but we have the result from the poll. Yes. If, if you want me to share it. Yes, of uh, course. The question so. was, what is your surgical plan? So, for the majority of uh, the voters, voters, uh, they will uh, have, they would have done this with an arthros arthroscopic way, with a wafer procedure, forty percent. 25% we are, would have done, would have performed an ulnar shortening and 30% uh, other technique. And uh, for only 5%, they would have done a proximal row carpectomy. So the ma majority of the voters would have, would have performed an arthroscopic wafer procedure. Okay. So uh, thank you for, for sharing this. Uh, so we don't have any questions. Anyone send, anyone send? else would like uh, to say something about this case so alan yeah. alan we, ha we yeah. have we have a distortion of the micro yes i am really so it's, uh, it's... looking for the person who uh, i'm trying to, ear, huh? yes i'm trying to uh, switch off uh, the, the micro. So, uh, my friends, as uh, we don't have uh, any more questions, uh, we were planning with uh, Serene to um, uh, to uh, share a case, but uh, the discussions were very interesting and very dynamic and long. So, we will keep uh, our Paris case for next time in uh, in uh, uh, in May. Uh, we will have uh, the next appointment. Thank you, everyone, first uh, for joining. Uh, Rene, who, who, you would you wanted to say something? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, sorry. Uh, I have a I have a question for for the fellows. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Why? Oh, yeah, the, the distortion is uh, painful. Huh? Uh, what is what is why? They ask why we have a pages with impaction uh, una plus una plus. We have a page in una plus three millimeter or four millimeters. Okay, without pain and with pain. This is my question. We have four millimeters. And we have a patient without pain or with pain. Yeah. We are working. We are working together. Uh, uh, Marcel Aita from Brazil. We we have a we have a, a lot of patients with uh, unless uh, impaction syndrome. We can see in this in this patient we we have a this patient have a, a, a instability in the foveal part of the PFCC. It's very important in this in this case evaluation. I, I need evaluate to 
the instability of the foveal part of the TFCC. Not depends where, where we don't have a damage in the central part of the TFCC is not important. Uh, for me, in, in, I, we, uh, it's the most important stability of the TFCC. And I think that the, when we have a instability in the foveal part, we have a cytokines, okay? And the second part, uh, uh, the, uh, the ulnar plus impaction of the, uh, of the uh, ulnar side of the lunate, and third, uh, instability in the dorsal part of the lunar trichotral ligament, and four, uh, impact in the amate, okay? Please think the instability in the FTC, TFCC, put the hook in the foyer part, put the needle test, in the foveal part and diagnosis what is the, the stability of the TFCC is very important. We have a, a 150 patients and these patients, so, so 100 patients, instability of the foveal part of the TFCC. I don't, in this moment, I don't, I don't do of the uh, wafer procedure. In, in my hands, the wafer procedure is bad results, yeah, bad in my, in my hands. And when, when we have a unimpacted syndrome, uh, uh, what symptoms, the weak symptoms, I, I, I do the shortening and atroscopic repair or the debridement uh, without any, any procedures. Huh? Thank you, Alan. It's my opinion for my fellow. Okay? Thank you for uh, this explanation. Professor Blend, you want to uh, make another uh, comment on this? Uh, yes, you are right. Central site is not important for the stabilization of the distal radial nerve joint. But um, uh, I don't want to make a damage uh, on the TFCC. It is my opinion. It's not important, I know. But uh, uh, if if I have a chance to not to damage the TFCC central site, I could do it. And in the other hand, you are right. Uh, or if you have ulnar impaction, you have to uh, uh, look for to LT joint stability. It is uh, ninety percent of my case is uh, has got uh, uh, LT joint instability and. Uh, generally, we uh, do dorsal capsulodesis for the LT. Do you do it? Do you perform LT uh, dorsal capsulodesis for yes. the LT? Yes. When we, uh, for, uh, for, me, for, for me, the most important part of the LT, LT ligament is the, the polar part and the, the force and the uh, 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 stability. The, the LT is the polar part. And when we have a, the dorsal part, we would follow the of the capsuloplasty of the dorsal part. I repair I repair the old injuries when when we have in the arthroscopic diagnosis. I repair the old injuries when we have, for example, uh, a foil instability repair, a lunar trichotard instability repair, um, a halt a resection for the the proximal part of the mate. Depend depend what is the what is the injuries you you. You see in, in the arthroscopy. This is my my opinion. I, I, I teach my fellow you you have to treat all injuries in your in your case. This is the, the most important. Uh, Thank uh, you. Uh, I, I totally agree, uh, Dr. Jorge. Uh, yes, this is uh, uh, for the arthroscopy. But I have uh, yes for the instability. Actually, I have a question for uh, Ismael Bulanta. For the LT uh, capsulodesis uh, on uh, the video, we see uh, your scope in the, is in the MTR portal, and uh, you uh, enter you, uh, your suture from the 6R or the, the 4 5 I, I don't remember. Uh, putting the scope uh, in the uh, 3 4 portal and inserting the, the suture from the 6R is very difficult for the LT capsulodesis. Do you have any uh, advice? I feel it all the time uh, very difficult and uh, uh, I would like to, to, to know if you have any advice for the direction of the sutures or you put you you, you put your suture with a scope in the MC uh, and MCR 
Uh, in the first step of my uh, practice, yes, I look for the uh, radiocarpal joint, but uh, nowadays uh, it is easy for me to, uh, I know where is it and it is very easy to pass it. Uh, that's why I uh, don't look for, uh, from the radiocarpal joint, but in reality it is not easy, but you could do it uh, with, uh, you put your camera in the Three four portal, and you could easily uh, to go to dorsal side of the LT joint. It is not uh, too hard to do, but uh, if you have some difficulty, yes, uh, it's an empty site in the uh, in in that area. Uh, I found it in the cadaver. That's why I uh, I realize where is it, but. Uh, you could uh, some uh, the, uh, attachment to the tendinous structure, structure but uh, I generally use PDS. It is uh, absorbable. That's why after four months, uh, if the patient has got some problem about the uh, finger flexion or extension, I know that and I say that it's uh, it's become it will be. We became normal uh, after three, three or four months. Uh, when it's absorbed, uh, you you gain your moment again. It's not important for me. Uh, it, 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 uh, some somebody else afraid of the past the tendinous structure, but it is not important. Believe me, it it will be. Uh, they they could regain the extension. Uh, moment uh, and uh, and I add more. Uh, nobody else has got any opinion about the cyst. Do, uh, is there anybody else do uh, the uh, treatment for the cyst after this uh, debridement? Do you have any opinion or do you add something more? What kind of treatment? Uh, uh, the cyst. Uh, we yes. have three or more cysts in the. Do you mm -hmm. uh, and we debride uh, some of the cyst area, but we don't do anything about the cyst after that. Maybe the question would be: uh, the, Is there the, the, a possibility to graft uh, this uh, uh, the uh, residual cyst? I would. Uh, I, uh, I I have no. Uh, I, uh, I don't want to put a bone graft on it uh, and. If you open the cyst uh, through the articular area, uh, the patient hasn't got any problem about pain. And uh, this is, uh, I don't know the cyst progression, but uh, it's not easy to put bone graft in the open area. Uh, I don't, I didn't do anything, but uh, is there anybody else wants to do, add more? I don't know. Uh, is there any other opinion for the cyst? Anyone has another opinion? Uh, do we have to open the cyst, even if the cyst now is not, uh, the residual cyst is not open and is not painful? I think the question is uh, is open for, for now. Uh, thank you uh, for sharing this, uh, this beautiful case. Uh, Clément, do we have, uh, I, I, we will take a last question from the attendees. Yes, Adam. We have, and after we, we will uh, uh, stop, please. We have one question for the uh, about the, the cis management, and another one about the LT instability. Uh, the question was if it was enough just to put a wire without any uh, arthroscopic preparation, only with a key wire. That was the second one. Uh, it is possible uh, put the key wire, uh, but uh, it's not easy to put. To, to put the key wire also for this case, uh, it is very limited area, and uh, it's, uh, we debride some of the lunate, and it's not easy to put the key wire. But you can do it. But uh, I prefer to make a dorsal capsule this. And I feel, uh, in my opinion, the dorsal capsule this is when you 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 have just a little experience. It's very it's simple to uh, to perform. It's a very very uh, efficient on uh, the stabilization of the LT joint. Uh, that should be uh, my uh, my comment. 
Uh, I think uh, uh, the discussions are very, very interesting. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining all the panelists. Um, the uh, next uh, meeting uh, for the attendees, you can uh, follow us on the LinkedIn and the Instagram for the link. We will put the link uh, on uh, the social media. There is, a, of course, a Christophe Matulin talked about this in the beginning, the World of Risk WhatsApp group. It's a huge uh, group uh, with continuous discussion on uh, risk cases. It was launched uh, especially by, by Lucian and uh, Marcelo Alves. So, so uh, once again, uh, thank you uh, for, for joining and uh, have a nice day or a nice evening. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Bye. everyone, Bye. for joining. Bye. See you very, see you. very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.